please. Get that nigga Dead Prescott up out of here. Please. He ain't doing nothing. Get that Detroit shit. You feel me? Rep the D. You understand? Hey. Cowboys ain't doing nothing. They don't get rid of that. And they gotta get rid of Jerry Jones. Hey, oh, yeah, I agree with that one. Question for you. Keep How many fourth downs does it take to beat the Cowboys? Whoa! <laughs> 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 and we're, we're walking away quickly on that. Mm. Oh my goodness. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. It is Saturday, and I hope all your Saturday dreams come true. It's going to be a busy one for me today because um, we're going to be back up, of course, at the uh, at home for the game tomorrow. But I've got my wife's 40th um, high school class reunion uh, today at three o'clock, so I'm making my spaghetti, not mom's spaghetti. The hell with the mom's spaghetti. Mom's spaghetti. Sorry, sorry, my man. I'm gonna show y'all what some real spaghetti is like. Um, but we're gonna have spaghetti, so I'm making my sauce today, so that way I can get in the car tonight or first thing in the morning, and we can roll up the road, and I'll have that done for game day. So hope you guys tune in and join us. So what we have here with the Cowboys. Um, here's the thing that's interesting is, um, and I see this narrative all the time where people will say, Dak Prescott, he's always got all these great weapons. <coughs> Excuse me. I should have said horseshit. That Dak Prescott, you know, he's got great weapons out there and things. And so he's a bum because he has succeeded with all the great weapons that he has. And listening to Philly 500 with Dan Salio when they were going through and uh, trashing me, of course, Philly 500 was too scared to show up for the Wednesday stream. He had to show up on Thursday because he knows his team stinks right now. Um, the thing that's funny about all this is listening to Philly 500 and stuff, and he was saying that, you know, franchise quarterbacks, there's only like two that elevate the players around them. Now, I'm going to say, you know, we're still early in the season. We don't know where this offense is going to go. That when you look at the Cowboys' offensive players, we don't have a lot of them. You know, so you got C.D. Lamb. You know, okay, I hear you. I hear what you're saying about C.D. Lamb um, and things, and he is a great weapon. But the question is, is this the chicken or the egg? Which came first? Is C.D. Lamb a great receiver on his own? Does that translate that if he has Jalen Hurts throwing to him, he's going to do equally as well? Or is some of that because of Dak Prescott and that he's being elevated in his play, in his game? So when I look at what happened last week, last week with Jalen Tolbert, now there's revisionist history. They'll say Jalen Tolbert's a great receiver. Well, we can look at Jalen Tolbert the first year and the second year he finally getting an opportunity. But then going through training camp, Without CeeDee Lamb, Dak Prescott and Jalen Tolbert working together and getting on the same page where you see that Dak Prescott has built up a trust factor with Jalen Tolbert that maybe, just maybe, that is Dak Prescott elevating Jalen Tolbert. And you go down the line here, maybe the same can be said about Jake Ferguson because ultimately you can be a player, but like Roger Staubach said, it doesn't matter how good of a pass I throw if the guy's not there to catch it. But you got to have a good pass to get it there for the guy to catch it. So I wanted to go through here for, for all the haters out there that say, you know, Dak sucks. I want you to think about this for a second, okay? If you're saying elevating players, that is making them better because you're with them, Right? Let's take in a couple examples here, okay? Let's look at, this is Randall Cobb, for example. Randall Cobb, who had Aaron Rodgers throwing for him, 
in 2014 was the pinnacle of his career. That was his best season. Before that, he had not cracked 1,000 yards, but he had his 1,000-yard season. 1,287 yards, 14.1 yard average, 12 TDs. And he looked to be a monster. And, of course, he had Aaron Rodgers throwing to him, right? But after that season, 2015, he drops down to, to, to 829. The next year, 610. The next year, 653. And you'll notice that the yard per average dropped down just as much. He went from 14.1 to 99 by 2017. And by 2018, he was down to 383 yards and green Bay said, you know what? Uh, sorry, we're, we're going to leave you on the side of the road because you've been going downhill for five years, excuse me, four years. And you're, you're just done. And then the Cowboys, they did what they do. They go out and they get a veteran and they bring him in Randall Cobb. And I can guarantee you, most of you out there said, why are we bringing in this guy? He's done. He's spent. Well, lo and behold, here's what's amazing. Randall Cobb comes to Dallas and ends up more than doubling the production that he had the last year with Aaron Rodgers throwing to him to 828 yards. Three TDs. Cowboys signed to a one-year contract. And he ends up going to Houston, okay, because he has got a $27 million contract. He went from being left on the side of the road, comes in with Dak Prescott, and ends up getting a three-year, $27 million contract at the time going to what was thought to be a better quarterback in Deshaun Watson. And his numbers almost cut in half. Back down to 441 yards. He then leaves the Texans and goes back to Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers. Green Bay thinking, hey, he's been revitalized. So we did with Dak Prescott. And lo and behold, he did worse than when he left Aaron Rodgers before. So can we infer that Dak Prescott elevated that guy? Let me give you another one. Cedric Wilson. Cedric Wilson with the Cowboys, okay, as a rookie, uh, five receptions, 46 yards, 9.2 yard average. Uh, 2020, he got on the field a little bit more, got 17 receptions for 189 yards. And then lo and behold, his last year here, here in Dallas, 602 yards. 602 yards as our number three receiver with six TDs. And a lot of us looked at it and said, damn, we should have re-signed them. But, <clears throat> excuse me, he signed a $7 million contract to go to Miami, um, $7 million per year, in which case he had Tua throwing to him, and that guy couldn't get on the field. He was our number three receiver, getting six TDs and 600 yards, but he goes to Miami and can't get on the field. The second year, he gets 22 catches, uh, 296 yards, and they let him go. And right now, he's with New Orleans, who is out there saying, we might need to get Devontae Adams. We need another receiver, and he's got one catch for three yards. Do you not look at that and say that Dak Prescott elevated his play? Or do we look at that and say, oh, well, he was just a great receiver, and Dak got lucky? I'll give you another one here. Des Bryant, tail end of his career with Dak Prescott versus with Tony Romo. The best year yard per average that he had was in 2012 with Tony Romo, 15 yards per reception. Surprisingly, in 2016 with with Dak, 15.9 yards per reception, almost a full yard more than what he did there. I didn't get Amari. Let me look at Amari Cooper and see how that's worked out. Amari Cooper's had some good games um, there, but I don't think that he has had as much success as he had with the Cowboys. Let's see. 
Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Game logs. Not this year. He's not. Boy, it's abysmal. Cleveland. Amazing how bad they are. Um, twelve hundred fifty yards. Actually, he did did really good there last year with uh, having Joe Flacco. Seventeen point four. Um, the next year, the year before. So actually, he's done really, really well. So you know, not to say that it works for everybody. But um, you can still look at it and say, with Dallas 1189, 1114, that he's all still in the same neighborhood. That that's one of the few that you look at and say, okay, he's still a great receiver. That guy is a great, talented player. And a guy I wouldn't mind seeing back here. But right now, with Deshaun Watson, man, 10.4 yards per reception. This is looking kind of like his last year in Oakland right now. And uh, I can see why that they may want to go ahead and get rid of him and move on. But he is beginning to get long in the tooth. So if you're looking at this and saying they don't want to spend money on Devontae Adams because he's getting old, well, you got to look at Amari Cooper and saying he's in the same boat too. So my point on all this is, is I believe that having Dak Prescott there and having Mike McCarthy calling the plays – elevates the players around them. You don't very often look at guys on our roster and say that that's primo. It's not like they went out and they got A.J. Brown, they drafted, you know, Devontae Smith in the first round, and they got Dallas Goddard, although Dallas Goddard seems to be going downhill. Or when you look at some of the other teams that have gone out to say, let's get several weapons. When you look at San Francisco with Debo Samuels and uh, Ayuk and George Kittle, and then, of course, when they get back Christian McCaffrey, you look at cream of the crop, Premier O players that have done great things, and you expect to be able to do those things. We are getting guys that some of them are just getting their first opportunities from Noah Browns to, you know, uh, Dennis Houston's and things and Jalen Brooks and stuff. Not even top tier drafted. We're talking late round and some of these guys undrafted players. So you have to look at it and say for the Cowboys to be constantly one of the highest scoring teams in the NFL without having multiple, you know, high caliber players off the bat, that Dak Prescott is definitely doing something. I want to finish this off this morning, though. To me, this was kind of interesting listening to the talking heads because they, they do talk a lot. They talk a hell of a lot. But I want to revisit last week because it seems like we have revisionist history that has happened. That all of a sudden that Pittsburgh is a nobody. That they're a tomato can. But see, it was funny because this time last week they were praising the hell out of the Steelers and literally telling you how bad the Dallas Cowboys are. Let's go to the tape. It's Justin Fields. You're playing against a defense that's under man. No, DeMar no Demarcus Lawrence, no Michael Parsons. They're going to be able to run, get into the play action game. And Justin Fields' legs inside the red zone have been paramount for this team. He's not running because he has to or because he doesn't feel like he can throw the football. He's running at the right time, using his legs to make big plays. All right, I want to look at this game from a lot of different directions. First off, let's hear Dak talking mm. about all the injuries and everything else, what he feels he needs to do against one of the best defenses in the league. I mean, I don't break the huddle and say I've got to go be Superman here, but I, I'm, I've been able to, you know, break some tackles. I've been able to do some things that have helped people out. Um, as I said, use my feet more, make the throws. So I can tell you my best is damn sure I'm on the brink of it, and, and I feel like I'm stepping into that. It's damn sure coming. So he says he doesn't need to be Superman. Do you believe that? Does Dak have to be Superman this week to have any chance against Pittsburgh? Yes, I think he does. I think he has to be a guy that breaks the huddle and thinks, I got to go be Superman. Because this is, look, it, you, you, you're down the two best edge rushers you have. You mm -hmm. don't have Brandon Cooks, and your wide receiver room is already thin. Mm -hmm. You want to tell me you like, you know, Ryan Flournoy and Jalen Brooks, and these guys can step up? It's going to be on the quarterback to make sure that happens. There's no run game. Like, it's got to be a Dak. Dak has to do what Kirk Cousins did last night. Man, Dak has to be MVP. 
period, point blank. Not just for this game, for this team to win mm -hmm. this season. Dak has to play at the same level he played last year, but more. Because you don't have the same people at your disposal. You don't have a run game. You don't have a defense that's turning the football over at this high rate. That's what this team was built on. This team used to turn the football over, and Dak Prescott turned that into points. You don't have that anymore. So this whole thought process, I can't go out there and be Superman. Hell, mm -hmm. you ain't got to be Superman, but you got to be the dude that they paid $80 million guaranteed. Mm -hmm. When he signed his name, he got $80 million. That said to me that sometimes when I need you to be Superman, you are capable of being Superman. So giving me this team first and we got to do it all together, and I don't feel like it's all on my back answer, that ain't the answer I want. I'm going to, you know, this is what bothers me. I'm, I'm sorry. And, and, you know, I, I know I'm known as a Dak defender. But is Dak, I believe, the only one that they ever quantify a cost to? Didn't they pay Trevor Lawrence a boatload of money? Isn't he the second highest paid player in the NFL? And how many wins does that team have? How many wins? How's that team done? His coach is not sure he should even be starting anymore. Tua. Tua may never play another down. You know, when they paid you the, the, your contract, we expected you to be able to play and hold up. I don't hear anybody say anything other than what Dak Prescott about the money. But go on. Go on incriminating yourself. The answer I want is, hell yeah, it's all on my back. <laughs> Micah ain't playing. Demarcus Lawrence ain't playing. Right? Kalen Carson ain't playing. Right? Offensively, all we have is C.D. Lamb. Just tell the truth. We ain't got a lot. So we I got to do lot. a lot. I'll tell you what, though, to me, the X factor in this game is Jake Ferguson. You know, last year he had 71 sure. catches. He has zero touchdowns. If Graz won't let me trade for uh, Devontae Adams in Dallas, you have to get better from within. And where can you get better from within, Greeny? This guy right here, Jake Ferguson. Play. And last week, Pittsburgh really struggled on third down. Mm -hmm. Great staff from Hembo. They allowed more third down conversions last week, eight, than they did their first three weeks combined. So to me, if Dallas wins this game, if Dak plays well, they're gonna, we know they're going to take CD away. Jake Ferguson has to be a difference maker. Bart, here's the issue, I think. If you say the Cowboys, is there a bigger problem, the offense or the defense? The answer is yes. Right? I mean, <laughs> that's that's the reality of wow. the situation. We haven't even mentioned that. Well, you briefly mentioned yeah. the defense. Yeah. But that defense was bad with their two best players. Now, right. what is this going to look like against a Pittsburgh team that, while I know they haven't been quite running the ball the way we expect them to, we know that's their identity. This feels like a terrible matchup to me for that Dallas defense. Well, he says he doesn't have to be Superman. Well, he better not be Blank Man. Because if he's Blank Man, he's going to get he's going to get crazy. Criticized, right? <laughs> Listen, we don't make excuses, right? Because when you get that type of money, when you're the highest paid player, nobody feels Here sorry for your lack of weapons. It's supposed to be that's the reason why we paid them, right? When we talk about Josh Allen, no number one receiver. Nobody cares. Get it done. Oh, right? We oh. talk about Lamar Jackson when he had oh. his la lack of receivers. Nobody cares. Get it done. When Jalen Hurts this, this year, no receivers. Yep. Nobody cares. Get it done. Joe Burrow took a team to the Super Bowl with no offensive line. Get it done. When you get paid this type of money, this is the reason why you, you value Validate why you're the highest paid player because you can be a force multiplier. Last year, we talked mm -hmm. about all the weapons, all the things that um, Patrick Mahomes didn't have. But he proved this is why you paid yeah, me the money. money because when the environment is great defense, isn't though. perfect, feel, yeah. like it's normally never not perfect, this is the reason why you show why you're that dude. If they lose, he needs to have a Jordan Clark game. When my son was playing soccer and he was little, I remember they lost the game 6-4, to four, and they're walking off the field, and his kid's like, Jordan, I don't even know who won. And he said, they won. He said, they scored six, I scored four. <laughs> right? okay, so, hey, so straight up, he needs to have a Jordan Clark game. Roscoe Jenkins. <laughs> Team of me. Here's what we'll say. Dak, you can't expect him to be uh, Patrick Mahomes, right? Because nobody is, except maybe Justin Fields. Can we put C32 oh, oh. See, look at this. on the screen? Oh, okay. Are you wondering how well oh. Justin Fields has been playing? Justin Fields' QBR, his completion percentage are basically identical to those of the best quarterback in the league. And if you look uh -huh. at the turnovers at the bottom of the screen, Interesting. RC, you know what the dirty little secret is? Or dirty is the wrong word. You know what the, the best kept secret in football is right now? Justin Fields is playing great. I, I, I'm trying to not make it a secret. Right. Greeny, I'm trying to let the world know that Justin Fields is playing good football. 
And even in looking uh-huh. at those stats, I want people to think about this. It's not that Justin Fields has this litany of weapons to throw the football to mm-hmm. or to use or that are at his disposal. This team is 3-1, and one, not in spite of Justin Fields, yes. but because of Justin Fields. Because Justin Fields has protected the football. Because Justin Fields, when given opportunities, has pushed the football down the field ac- accurately, used his legs. And if not for an errant snap last week, they mm-hmm. have an opportunity to beat the Indianapolis Colts when the defense wasn't at its best. And so, to me, it's like this is the week, right? If there was any week for the Steelers' offense to be dominant, right, to to show the world that it's not just the defense, it's not just T.J. Watt, it's not just Mike Tomlin and his leadership, it is this week against a Dallas Cowboys team that is ready for the taking. You know, uh, one thing I would just add to it, we talked about it all offseason. I know you're really high on them as well, but – Arthur Smith is the perfect coordinator for Justin Fields because it plays to his strength. He's just not running it, like you said, indiscriminately. He's running it in a purposeful way. And that sets up these deep play action shots. And it really uh, suits his strengths really well. And to me, like you said, when Dallas loses 47% of their pressure players Sunday night, this is a great matchup for them. If I'm Pittsburgh, I'm starting to think about an extension. Because remember, they got him. He's on a one-year deal. Games. Why are you, make, why are you why, making why? that face, Bart? L- listen, listen. I know I'm Buck Nasty, the resident hater, <laughs> right? But listen, let's keep Lord it in, as you know. Let, listen, let's Buck keep nasty. it in context, right? They've played the JV so far. Oh. Like, I'm not paying Justin Fields long term. Not, not when that guy, Sam Darnold, is out there and he's going to be a free agent next year. I'm going to have an opportunity to get somebody to play. For this offensive planet. fit, you think listen, Bartholomew. Bartholomew. Sam Darnold? Because so Who's so Justin Sam? So Justin Fields four games with only George Pickens. I get Justin all Fields that. is is less to you, says says you can't sign him. Not but, extension. But Sam, but Sam Darnold is the guy you should go after, who we've seen play in other places and not be good in well, three other stops. Well, I'm but because he's had no. four games in a place that we watched um Josh Dobbs play good in for a couple of weeks. <laughs> right. With Justin Jefferson on the team. I am so and Jordan Addison with you. No, Mr. And, Clark. And the best offensive Mr. coach. And Aaron Jones. Mr. Clark. What I am Mr. saying Clark. is I wouldn't give him an extension early. I want to see it through. I want to see when he has to yeah, play Baltimore. it's a little early. I want to see when he has to play Cincinnati. He has played I, the I junior disagree. varsity so far, well, and I will wait. And I see Bar- Sam Bar- Darnold being you, in you Miami. Could, Bar- you could sign him and draft another guy, but my point is it's only going to get more expensive. No. He's young. He's athletic. He has upside. <laughs> to me, like, you need but more than one quarterback. But how high is that silly? Graz, get in here. Throwing money around. Like, uh, just, I guess it was what he's like as a GM. <laughs> 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 like, like, no, he like, paid this guy a lot of money. Oh. The Steelers are extremely pleased with Justin Fields and the way he has improved week over week. Wow. He was the, he was he wasn't supposed to be the starter yeah. until 2 days before the season. Yeah. And so they get they give him something scaled down that first week in Atlanta, he executes it, they give him a little more. The players, the coaches I've talked to, they use the word confidence. They say he brought a confidence to the huddle right away mm-hmm. that that really caught everyone's attention uh, and then it's just grown a so week why over are you week. Dallas then. Graziano has this game this weekend. Why am I picking Dallas? Uh, all right. Full disclosure. Uh, they, they, they got the email for the picks on Tuesday. You, you see Tuesday the is my, my longest day of the week, right? Like, I, I'm here in the morning. I do shows in the <laughs> afternoon from home. It's a but long day. And, and at the end of the day, sometimes... Sometimes it's it's Gummy Tuesday, and, yeah. and I made my picks, <laughs> and loose. I'm going to stand by it. Right. But that's I picked Dallas, and so, we ain't yeah. talking about gummy bears. No, no. I'm not going to surprise. I'm not Full gonna disclosure: I, I have been talking been, about Black Forest. So you you heard them talk about how good Justin. They literally compared Justin Fields and Pat Mahomes, and paying him long term. Cowboys win. Oh, they're frauds. Oh, man, Justin Fields. He needs to get benched. So when they go through and they all pick the Lions this weekend, just remember this. Just remember this, that the experts, they ain't right. (laughs) If they were, they'd all be betting in Vegas and and, and multi-millionaires. But, um, yeah, they literally trashed the Cowboys and said the Cowboys have no chance. And so there we are, good people. As always, you know I appreciate each and every one of you guys. I got to go get my uh, spaghetti sauce together. And actually, I got to make some chicken pasta. And then I got to go to the dump and get back on the roof and everything before 3 o'clock. And, of course, we have our live stream at 5. So I will see you guys soon. Scott
Ship's got another weapon to serve us, and CD Lamb is a weapon in every shape of the world. I fire Howie. Fucking fire him. Motherfucker! Stupid motherfucker! What an idiot! What an idiot! Dallas has Amari Cooper and Gallup, but we don't need a receiver! Are you kidding me? I don't want Justin Jefferson, he's ass! He's stupid! I fire his ass! I fire his ass! I mean, how he's gotta be stupid!